Welcome to another edition of the Sox Cast. I'm your host, Tim Best. And right now, Sox are hot, baby. And currently, at F time recording, sitting with a six game win streak, a 10 3 record, and a big night ahead on Friday, our first big home game of the year, Autism Day this night. And joining the show, he's a Utica native, came back home after, you know, going away for prep school, you know, graduated. And is now back in the U, and so far has been pretty good. His last outing on Tuesday, four perfect innings as the starter in a win over the Newark Pilots. Again, Utica Zone, Brandon Peterson, BP, my guy. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. So first and foremost, I mean, what's your home plan been like? I mean, you could put in the words for us. Uh, it's actually been really nice going away for six months. You know, like being away from all friends and family. You know, it was nice at first, but then as you get along, sometimes you don't really get. Paid. We love and seeing all of them come and support. It's really been a good time. And, I mean, what's been the feeling, you know, taking them out, especially at Murnane with your friends and family watching? It's been real nice, you know, coming back home, having thrown on there since the second year. So going back, seeing all the fans come, people are pretty proud to see me back there. It's been real fun. And, I mean, let's talk about, you know, the clubhouse that you're a part of. I mean, just a fun group of guys. And, you know, when you're having fun, you know, that leads to a winning culture. And obviously the results show that. Yeah. You know, first day we all, like, you know, not everyone knows each other. There's been a lot of silence after these first few days. But after the first game, you know, we've all came together. It's all been a real big family. It's been real fun and to be a part of. So start off hot 4 0. It had some hiccups, a three game losing streak. Yeah. But I mean, let's talk about just how, what, what do you think has been leading to the bounce back and getting hot? By the way, you know, like after you got that bounce back win at Watertown, you know, about a week and a half ago, you took the bump the next day in an exhibition game. And, you know, that was a sign of things to come, you know, just being dominant both sides of the ball. I feel like, you know, that three-game losing streak really put a kick in our butt to know just to stay relaxed, have fun at the plate, and our pitch was really stepped up. So I think that helped to get us back up on, like, a six-game win streak. So it's been real good. Now, in terms of, you know, the league itself, over, again, over the course of the past, like, week and a half or so, you know, you faced some good teams, you know. You had needed a monster comeback to beat Geneva opening night and really took care of business yeah. when he played them again um, a little over a week ago. Um, at Renane, and then you talk about some of the other wins. But I you gotta highlight the home game against Newark, a game which you were in control of for the most part, and then eighth inning, ninth inning, Newark roars back and they take the lead going into the bottom of the ninth. Um, you know, what was the vibe like in the dugout and you know, going to that bottom of the ninth and seeing Drake Sizemore who had come in to end the eight, go back out and then there's a sense like, okay, we, we know yeah. this guy, we can we can get a win off him. I feel like, you know, through the first seven innings it was like a nonchalant game and then, you know, one play leads to another, chipping us back and forth. I feel like that really put a fire up us and then bullpen came down in the dugout, which is that was a great time, you know, getting in this head, this that. Of course, you making those sounds got, really got into his head. He, I feel like all the pressure was on him to keep that lead. You know, those two runs really helped us, and that walk off by Edwin was really the key to our six game win streak. Yeah, and we, I mean, we obviously know who the big guns are. You know, with you know Enos and Dewey leading the charges, third year, I guess, co captain, so to speak. But I mean, for a guy like Luke Gotten, who wasn't here opening night, you know, he got that rally started. I mean, I mean what did I say? But the depth. Kid's a good player. You know, he's going to a sophomore year in college. I think he's only 19 years old, but coming into that, you know, he just went up there, relaxed, got a base hit through the floor hole, and it was right from there. You know, it was all positive. And, I mean, I do want to say, you know, hey, you know, like anytime you hear the legendary speech from, um, you know, the late great John Belushi playing Pluto in the house, um, I mean, that must have that must have fired you guys yeah. up a little bit, down the run to try to, you know, Win this and not have it go to extras. I feel like also, you know, me being a high schooler, but all the college guys, you know, they've been in this situation multiple times. So I feel like that also was something for us, you know, going there. And that just helped. So I got to ask also, I mean, you're not the only you know, recent high school graduate on this team. I mean, you got two currently here that are going to Kentucky next year. Third's going to be coming very soon with former Carson Anthony. But Ryan Cook, you, got, you go way back with. Yep. And... I mean, just just from those guys alone, I mean, I feel like that must have, you know, helped your comfort level immensely. Yeah, it does help for help comfort because these guys, me and Ryan, you know, 
but we all come, get advice from the college guys, see what it's like, how it's doing. Our <coughs> The two over there right now, Brandon and Lucas, you know, they're going to be real good at Kentucky. Ryan's going to do a good job at and I have a positive future at NJIT, and I feel like it's all positive from here for us. So, I mean, that walk-off win, I mean, you could have easily lost that one against Newark, but I feel like that momentum, taking that into that road game against Auburn, a place last year, and uh, in that first meeting, yeah. you struggled there, and the ball doesn't carry there. Not a lot of runs score. But you got go up three nothing, and despite giving up that lead, tying it at three in the sixth, you know how great was it watching the composure and seeing you guys take that lead in the ninth inning, and then a guy who had his early struggles, but watching Alex Marcus yeah. dominate the bottom of the ninth, going one two three. Kid's good, you know. We're going up three zero, and then getting tied. I feel like that also helped us, you know. All right, let's kick it in the third here, really stop them here and score a run in the ninth. You know, it wasn't. The most crazy scoring round, you know, Ryan dri- dribbled the ball back and put the guy on fourth, guy on third scored, and you know, little things win games, so that helped. So, and, and I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I assume Rhino and Dewey, who were part of last year's team, I, they were probably very vocal about wanting to exercise those teams out in Auburn where their season ended a year ago in the playoffs. Yeah, you know, they always talk about it. They always they want to come back. They don't want to get kicked out first round again this year. So I feel like that also is like. I think we all want to win a championship for the first time summer ball. And obviously, you know, for you, it's got to, it would have a lot more meaning doing it in your hometown. Yeah, you know, always going on to that mound, you know, I feel like people think it's always pressure being a high schooler going against college kids, but, you know, it's always just a good opportunity. So you go out, have fun, pitch it back, and then you just get, go up from there. So speaking of the pitching staff you're part of, I mean, you're one of a handful of starters on this group. And, I mean, really, you could argue, you argue that there's a three, maybe even a four-headed monster, uh, in you being the sole righty, but a three- to four-headed monster of lefties yeah. that just make your rotation so good. And one of them who threw six shutout innings Monday night at an ash. I mean, what's it like watching not just him, but Gretchen, Dalen Stewart, and, uh, and Sam Thompson, too, all four lefties just being an absolute force at starters. Yeah, those, those four are really good. And also, Logan pitched with me yesterday, Logan Wensley. He's from Central Connecticut. He threw five perfect. You know, that's just, that's not really easy to do at any level to throw five perfect innings, no matter what happens. So I feel like those guys really have stepped up a lot this year. Everyone else, too. It's been a great time with the pitchers. And, I mean, so that was your first team shutout of the year on Monday. Now, Tuesday, I mean, the first five innings, as you mentioned, you could have top that, I mean, five perfect games, and you threw four of them, and again, you you barely skated by Newark um, when you saw them just four days before that, but for you, um, I mean, were there things that you took from the start against the Milwaukee Valley Buffaloes the week before that you took into the start, and that worked, clearly worked for you? Yeah, just confidence, really, you know, all you can ask for in a pitcher, confidence, throw strikes, make sure everything's on, and that's all you can get your back on. Now, and the funny thing is, you know, like, I didn't even know this. And I knew there was a mercy rule, but I still wasn't entirely sure about the mercy rule and, like, the exact glamours of it. But, you know, knowing that you didn't have to get another inning out of another pitcher, I mean, that must have been relaxing for you, you know, finish off a 13-2 to win over Newark. And that's already 10 wins on the season. And it's a crazy, you know, this team only won 24 games, still 24-17 record. But the fact that you're almost halfway to your win total from last year, I mean – What's it say about, you know, like the potential? I feel like our team could be really good. You know, if these guys come back next year and finish off this year, be a real confidence boost for everyone going to Tyler. But actually, all the first-year kids from high school, you know, I feel like really good. And, and to think, you know, this is a relatively young team. I mean, yes, you have the veteran leaders in Rhino and Dewey, but, I mean, the fact that you guys are currently SS fans, 10-3, and three, yeah. and a lot of it is being driven by some some – Really, puppies um, in a league full of dogs. I feel like 10 and 3 is just, uh, I feel like just when we're hot, we're hot. You know, you're not going to be this pitcher that can throw a strike for every other one you need to. And coaching has been great, so. And and speaking of the coaching, I mean, I think that's a good segue to talk about, you know, uh, you know, Dougie, obviously, he's been a staple with this organization for a while, and is I mean, he's got the record to show up. I mean, he was a pitcher for the Blue Sox way back in the 80s, and so just talk about him, and obviously, you know, how important, you know, Chris Amaya has been 
as a pitching coach for you to, you know, to show, to have you get on this impressive start that you've been on? Yeah, Doug, you know, he, him and Juice, they contacted me, and once from there, I knew it was going to be a fun summer. You know, Chris coming all the way from California, teaching me to stay confident, having faith in me to start games. You know, it's been real fun to be a part of. And I, I feel like a big thing, and I, I hear Doug preaching this all the time, you know, when you're going out there, just be loose and, and just play catch. I mean, I feel like, you know, it's one of those things, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that. Yeah. Uh, you pay off those student loans pretty quickly, you know, whenever you get to them. But, I mean, you know, is that something that he really preaches a lot? And I'm guessing that's something that clearly resonates with you. Yeah, I feel like that's all coaches, though. Like, all coaches and pitching coaches, you know, they just preach on throwing strikes. Milo comes with throwing strikes. But at first, all you got to know is throw strikes. Having confidence a lot, you know, there's always power behind the ball. You know, throw it, have faith. You're going to get out somehow. If they hit you, they hit you. You know, you're throwing strikes, being efficient. And... Now, let's, I mean, let's talk about, you know, this, this coming week, and obviously it starts with that big autism acceptance night Friday night. I mean, opening night is a pretty big crowd, but apparently it's going to go tenfold for this game against the Elmira Pioneers. I mean, as a, as a ball player, I mean, that's got to be the game that you just, you just wake up ready to go for. Yeah, that's always how it's been. Like, even as a young kid to being 18 years old, you know, it's always fun seeing a lot of people come out and play. You know, you always want to pitch it in those games. But you always got to stay calm, stay confident, because if you get too out of your comfort zone, you know, you play bad, then your morale is down, and then all you got to do is just have confidence that you're going to stay hot. And, and Elmira, I mean, the lot, they were winless the last time you faced them, and they, you know, been making a push in to, towards being, you know, top 14 from the division making a playoff, and they've been making a push for that top four. So knowing that you're hot, knowing that they're hot, I feel like that's got to give you more motivation, knowing that they – Improved this much since the last time. I, I feel like knowing that you're playing a team that's hot also gives you more, more like you want to play them more, so you stay hot and then bring your confidence down. Yours just goes away. I know you can be all the hot teams in the conference. Uh, that and again, I cannot say that any better. Now, in terms of obviously the game within the game, which is boxes and mixed up and snipe. Um, I mean, you you were part of that promotional package. That, you know, to show those new jerseys. I mean, when you first got to look at them. Uh, and knowing that they're going to be, you know, people are going to be bidding on them and those parts are going towards the Calvin Center. I mean, what were your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I feel like that's always helpful, too. You know, seeing those little kids that just, you know, want to play baseball, see you guys as, like, gods, as Doug would say, you know, they just come wanting to sign balls and all that stuff. And I feel like that's always a big push for you to be better as a person and to mature to make all those people happy and yourself happy. And, and – idea of like autism acceptance night you know like for me personally i mean people like us you know accept we want to be accepted yeah. included and you know like a night like this um i mean it definitely you know it, it's gonna be the first of many times where you know you'll be playing for something that's really bigger than yourself but i mean it can't top like this can't other than Pink the Park night, very hard to top this first experience of yeah. playing for something bigger than yourself. I feel like all those people, you know, always got to accept them. You know, that, like you said, you want to be accepted. I feel like that's just a big thing to mature in life is to accept people like that. You know, have fun with them, make them feel welcomed. And so, knowing, you know, so the rest of the stretch over the, you know, to end the month of June, I mean, you go back to Auburn Saturday night. Um, obviously, last year I mentioned not a lot of success, but you did get one over on them last time out. And you know, they're Auburn's trending downward, but again, you know, any, anyone can win on any given night. But then I think a big important part um, in the stretch is going to be two days off. Yeah, 26, 27. Then you know, I'm hearing that Cooperstown is not Hall of Fame trip is on the is in the cards for the 26. But, you know, that two-day stretch, you know, you just sit back and relax and recharge the batteries. How important is that going to be? I feel like after, you know, those big spending games coming up, those two days are big for pitchers and hitters. You know, everyone get a break. You know, come get your extra work. In. But going to that Cooperstown trip would really helps to see, to make a stride to get there like all those legends. Yeah, and, and obviously it's like a team bonding thing like that. And, 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 and again, it goes back to, you know, like, you still get to recharge the batteries while doing something like that. And, you know, like maybe that can, you know, we shift the mentality going into the second half of the season, knowing that, you know, you get Auburn again um, off the off that two-day break, get a doubleheader against Boonville, and I know that, trust me, you want to get them back. Yeah. I feel like games like that, you know, you want to play Auburn and Boonville more. You know, you 
I thought it was the third time, beat them the second time. They, you know they're going to want to beat you the third time, so that's going to make you want to push more to beat them again. And then Boonville, you know, that's going to – it's either going to be a good game or not, so. Yeah, and, and it's a double dip too. I mean, that's – you know, you can you, you could take two right there against a team that, you know, currently is on the outside looking at the playoffs. But, I mean, you talk about any anyone can win on any given night. I mean, they just beat Amsterdam earlier this week. Yeah, I feel like, like you said, any given night, you know, anyone can beat anyone. But I feel like with that double header, it would be big for us. But, you know, I feel like we have way more depth than them hitting and pitching wise, so that would be helpful for us. And then, you know, you round that out with um, that week from Friday until Thursday. You go to Watertown again and, you know, shut them out. But the game at Watertown, you had them. Four run lead going to the bottom of the night. Almost let that one slip away, but you know, go back to W Fairgrounds. You know, you, you want to go there and have that dominant all around performance like you did when you faced them on Monday. Yeah, that's why I feel like with summer, this summer ball, PDCBL is helpful because I've the same teams over and over again, but I feel like that's also a positive because no matter the outcome, you always you strive to play better than you did the first time against the same team. So, I mean, just like a brief look ahead of like the second half of the season. I mean, starting in the month of July, I mean, it's the first day of the month. You get a doubleheader with the team with the best record in the league, the Amsterdam Mohawks, a team that's kind of the power of this league. I mean, you know, looking ahead, you know, you're going to be facing some of the best of the best. Like we played, you know, as time recording, we were playing Socrates today, and then we go play a doubleheader with them early in that month, too. And, you know, going to be facing some very good teams and some tough road games, too. I mean, playing Elmira, you know, Jamestown will come here. And then a lot of meetings at Bernay against the Diamond Dogs. I mean, you know, dog days of summer, I, I don't know about you. I feel like this is going to resonate with the rest of the team. Yeah. That's going to be the time where, you know, if you're a boy, you got to become a man. Yeah. I feel like, you know, seeing uh, those teams, I feel like just playing the best teams, you know, the best will come up. But I feel like it's playing those the lesser teams where – you can stay composed, really get the games over real quick. That's where the best comes out. But playing Amsterdam, you know, the start of the month, doubleheader, I feel like that's where we really come out to see who's really the best team this week. So, I mean, let's talk about just within the divisional range. But as it stands right now, you're currently tied with the Batavia Muck Dogs, a team that we shockingly don't see it all this season. And maybe the only time we'll see them is in, is in the playoffs. But uh, for you personally, I mean – it's, I guess you can say this, you know, your first real pennant chase um, because, you know, like, I don't really know if standings are really that big of a deal in high school baseball, yeah. but for, you know, your first experience with a pennant race like that, I mean, are you one to, like, kind of follow along and see, you know, where you where you stack up with the rest of your division in the league? Yeah, I check up sometimes, you know, not playing them. It's going to be a big change, you know, but I feel like after regular season, postseason, I'm zero, zero. You know, if you're, you're fresh start, you know, get a break before – but I feel like postseason is just a new time. Everyone's different. Everyone's going to want to play their best not to lose. So it's all going to be a big change after regular season. So I definitely got to ask, you know, like talk about some non-baseball things. I mean, as a Utica native, I feel like you've got to play a big role in breaking these guys in in terms of, you know, places to show them, foods to try, things like that. you got to be playing a big role in that. Yeah, they've always they've asked me a lot of questions on what food place is the best, but they've all – got their big share of which foods are the best. They've always come to me. Thanks for the advice and all stuff like that. So, I mean, what recommendations were you giving these guys? They better be good ones, BP. Well, you know, some places we got added, like Blaze Pizza, Tropical Smoothie. Everyone has those. Of course. So you can't really recommend those. But places like Slice, Tony's, Venice, you know, they're not all over the place. So recommended places like that is going to be a change for them. Okay, now in all seriousness, I mean – some people, I mean, they're not big on sweets, but I mean, half moon and half moons are a staple here. You know, you'd be surprised going down south. You know, my uh, East Coast Thunder Deck team from Long Island. You know, it's all different. Down south, they've never heard of half moons, tomato pie, nothing like that. People chicken wings, chicken wings. They've, ne- they've never heard of it. It's like you wouldn't be surprised. And they go like going down and they don't have half moons. They call them black and white. Yeah, it's, no. it's always a big change going around. So it's always like a kind of a shocking thing that they've never heard of anything like this. Yeah, I know. By the way, black and white cookies are not the same as half moons. Thank Don't you. even try to get that crap over on me. I've said that on the Soxcast before in other episodes, but by the way, I definitely got to know, you're a Hemstress guy, you're a Holland Farms half moon kind of guy. Holland Farms, 100%. Come on, come I mean... I'm a hamstress guy, the way. I mean, I don't know. Just I like a little softer, but I mean, don't get me wrong. Hall Farms, OG Bakery, right there. That I mean, but I feel like I feel like from Hall Farms, though. I feel like Half Moon is not your number one option. Yeah, always donuts. Don't, all right, now what kind of donut are you getting? Always a finger, vanilla finger. <sighs> man, my man. So now, obviously, you know, like it, it's great to you know be able to you know relax and 
do these kind of do these kind of things, you know, and break people into Utica. I mean, for you coming back, it's normal to assimilate back, but I mean, what have you seen from how the city's embraced all these new guys coming here for the first time? I feel like it's just like you going down the South Carolina, you know, meeting a lot of new guys. I'm coming up here. It's a big change, really, weather difference, you know, weather up here, everyone knows bipolar. It'll be 90 today, and then tomorrow it's going to rain, so, you know, people don't like that part, but, you know, it's always a nice change to see the weather climate be up and down here. So, last but not least, so, right now, you're, you're, you're in your group right now where, you know, coming off that fourth perfect inning outing, obviously, you don't want that to be the peak of your season, so, as a young guy, you, you talk, Doug, you talking about Composure, 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 you know. How would you personally try to maintain that for, for the rest of the day? And obviously, you know, you might have your number. If you keep shoving the way that you are, you're going to get your number called on in pretty big spots towards the end of the year and obviously in the postseason. Yeah, I feel like, you know, after those games, you always get praise and stuff. But after that, it's always um, you know, it's always good to know that it's always about just getting the team win. Though after that, you know, on to the next, wait for that next start and do the same thing. Over and over again. So, and then I think that also got to play into, you know, your college coach from NJIT. They got to be seeing, you know, the number that you're putting up and thinking, like, okay, this kid's got something. So, you know, before you even step foot on campus um, in Newark um, this fall, I mean, are you trying to, like, have that, leave that big first impression and say, yeah, I, I can hold my own college ball? Yeah, I think everyone's goal is, you know, with high school senior so going into freshman year college is always to start. So, you know, you always got to put that extra work in before college. And then getting to college is like an extra step. You know, you go from a high school senior, one of the oldest, and you're just a baby freshman in college. So, you know, seeing those older guys, they're always, they're not going to want to put you down. They're going to want you to get better, but, you know, they're always going to be competing for a spot just like you. So, um, I mean, I think it's a pretty good way to, you know, wrap up this episode of the Sox as BP. Appreciate it as always. And, I mean, again, you know, keep shoving them. I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're definitely making the city of Utica proud, obviously. People at NJIT, I know they got to be, you know, drooling over the numbers that you're putting up and thinking, hey, you know, this guy, this guy's got a future with us. And, you know, like, obviously, we, as a Utica guy, you know, you're making a great first impression here. And as a native, you know, hopefully become a staple of this organization. So, you know, best of luck moving forward. And, you know, hopefully, you know, this summer ends with uh, with some uh, with some, with some, some rings, rings on our fingers. Yeah. No. So that does it for this episode of the Soxcast for Brandon Peterson. I'm Tim Best. Thanks for tuning in. Again, make sure, you know, we talked about the upcoming schedule. Make sure to check that out on our website, UnicaBlueSox.net. And then when we come back, it's going to be the month of July. Second half of the season is going to start. And next guest for the Sox cast, we've got a duo coming on for Felicia and Chris Fernandez and Edwin Tavares. So, again, wrapping this up for Brandon Peters, I'm Tim Best. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next week.